Lake Mead is now three quarters empty. Boats as old as the Hoover Dam are now back in the sun. And now even bodies are being found. These are impacts of climate change I never saw coming. Lake Mead, a renowned reservoir on the Colorado River in the southwestern United States built by the Hoover Dam, is a massive reservoir in the United States. Climate change and a catastrophic drought impacting the Colorado River have converted small waterbeds across the southwest into deserts. Drought might be one of climate change's most catastrophic human and economic impacts, but the receding of water may highlight the vulnerable nature of vital infrastructures necessary for the functioning of society and unearth long-lost villages. In the case of Lake Maid, its receding waters have lately exposed long-buried mysteries and other perplexing findings. This lake has thrown a shadow over the dazzling neon Vegas lights, from many sets of human remains to lost vessels during World War II. Why is the river drying up? What exactly is exposed by the retreating water? In today's video, we'll show you how Lake Mead is drying up and revealing long buried mysteries. The Colorado River starts in the Rocky Mountains and supplies Lake Mead at the top of the list. The river is fed by spring snowmelt and provides other water bodies, including the lesser Las Vegas Wash, Virgin, and Muddy Rivers. Lake Mead is a reservoir built by the Hoover Dam on the Colorado River, about 25 miles, 40 kilometers east of Las Vegas on the Arizona-Nevada border. The dam's construction started in 1931, and by 1938, rising lake levels had forced the evacuations of many towns. Lake Mead reached its maximum peak of around 1,220 feet 372 meters above sea level in 1941, 1983, and 1997, but dropped by up to 200 feet 61 meters between those years. U.S. Bureau of Reclamation USBR data shows that it's the most extensive reservoir in the United States by volume. Lake Powell, a reservoir upstream on the Colorado River between Arizona and Utah, is more spread out and supplies millions of people in Arizona, California, and Nevada. However, climate change and the human activity has posed a danger to this body of water in recent years. With the drought scorching the American West, the Southwest has suffered from a severe lack since the late 1990s, and Lake Mead's water levels have plummeted dramatically. It's now roughly 1,040 feet, 317 meters above sea level, and the lake is only around 27% filled. The effect has been a decline in the water levels of the Hoover Dam, which created the lake. The dam is essential to the massive, badly drought-stricken Colorado River Basin. The recent decline in water levels is perilously close to the point where the river cannot flow. However, Lake Mead was named one of America's most hazardous national parks. Over 300 people have perished since the reservoir's construction in the 1930s. The receding waters of Lake Mead have uncovered terrible truths that some individuals would want to keep hidden forever. Skeletons of persons disposed of in the lake have suddenly emerged, keeping detectives busy since they are most likely connected to mob executions from decades ago. Lynette and Lindsay Melvin decided to spend the day paddleboarding in Lake Mead. The sisters from Henderson, Nevada intended to see some natural beauty while relaxing on the massive lake's water. They were looking for a beaver, which they had previously seen, but what they discovered was more terrible. The skeletal remains of a guy who had been missing for decades were presumed drowned. They knew they were dealing with human bones when they unearthed the bone and began digging further. They discovered a skull, which validated the location of their discovery. The sisters found the bones of Thomas Ernst, who drowned in the lake while on vacation with his family on August 2, 2002. The discovery resurrected the wounds for the family and provided much-needed closure. Lake Mead has long been suspected of being a location where the Mafia dumped the remains of murder victims. According to David Kohlemeyer, a former Henderson police officer who now broadcasts a local podcast, people travel to Lake Mead and then vanish. Over the years, many individuals have succeeded there. Police may locate their vehicle, but not the individual. If they were engaged in criminal behavior or had suicidal ideation, he added. While the bones uncovered by the two sisters did not seem connected to any crime, other horrifying human remains on Earth exhibited clear signs of mob killings. In one instance, people wandering along the lakeshore on the weekend found bones inside a metal barrel. People assumed the dead was shot and that the incident occurred between the mid-1970s and the early 1980s. From the late 1940s until the 1980s, the Las Vegas Strip was notably dominated by mob-run casinos. However, amateur detectives were able to narrow down the victim to three individuals who went missing around the same time. 
The three guys, all of whom had ties to the mafia, disappeared at the time and their bodies were never found. The bulk of the suspicion, however, was focused on George J. Vandemark, a slot machine supervisor trusted by the mafia to manage its slot machine business at the Stardust Resort and Casinos on the Las Vegas Strip until he betrayed them. Lefty Rosenthal hired Vandemark in 1974 to supervise the machines of the slot at the Stardust and the other three mob-controlled casinos. His genuine job description, however, was to manage their skimming operation. Vandemark is accused of assisting in the theft of $7 to $50 million in slot machine money. On the other hand, the Nevada Gaming Control Board became aware of the activities in 1976. Vandemark fled to Mazatlan, Mexico, when a Nevada gaming regulator subpoenaed him as a witness to the crime. He was subsequently believed to have landed in Costa Rica. Vandemark's plight worsened when the mafia accused him of keeping $3 million from the skimming operation while only giving them $4 million. George J. Vandemark's son, Jeff Vandemark, who was working with the gaming board then, communicated with his father, who suggested that he may be ready to come to testify. However, George Vandemark was last seen in September of 1976 at a Phoenix hotel, was never tried, and his corpse was never located. Jeff was killed the following year, but officials decided it was nothing to do with his father's claims. However, the corpse might be that of William Crespo, a drug dealer who became a state witness after being captured while smuggling cocaine. He was supposed to testify in order against a former insider from a gaming organization, but he never showed up. Crespo, a former Puerto Rican, was apprehended by federal authorities in Las Vegas in 1982 after flying in from Miami with $400,000 in cocaine. Despite the evidence against him, Crespo agreed to become a government informant and a protected witness in return for testifying about the multi-million dollar drug operation of which he was part. The federal government paid for his relocation and living costs, and his testimony before a federal grand jury resulted in the prosecution of 10 offenders. Crespo, who was supposed to appear in court again in June of 1983, disappeared. Because Crespo was not present, the federal court was obliged to dismiss the charges against the seven defendants who had pled not guilty. However, Johnny Pappas, a Chicago native and Las Vegas casino host veteran, looked to be the most likely contender for whom the skeleton belongs. Pappas used to own a boat on the lake before working at the Castaways Las Vegas Hilton and Caesars Palace. During the mid-1970s, Pappas managed the Lake Mead's Echo Bay Resort for the Agent Corporation. On the day he went missing, August 18, 1976, Pappas informed his wife he was going to JoJo's Restaurant at 1531 Las Vegas Boulevard South near downtown Las Vegas to meet someone interested in purchasing his boat. Four days later, his automobile was located in the parking lot of the Circus Circus Casino on the Strip. Police investigated Pappas' disappearance and established his mafia connection, but no sign of him was ever found. Did the gang worry that Pappas might reveal information regarding the casino skimming? If that's the case, it's simple to understand why they wanted him dead. They might have feigned to be purchasing his boat to bring him to his rendezvous along the lake and then used his boat to dispose of his corpse in a barrel. Another recent discovery from Lake Mead's dwindling waters is a World War II-era landing craft known as a Higgins boat. As a result, the reservoir has attracted a miscellaneous collection of amateur treasure hunters and YouTube explorers and intrigued visitors hoping to spot the artifacts that now litter the drying lake bed. The sinking wreck of a Higgins boat from World War II that is now rising from the receding seas near the popular marinas of Hemingway Harbor has increased notoriety in recent years. Its rib structure emerges from the surface like the bones of an ancient fish washed up on shore. The long vessel has had some of its interior removed and its engine. The park claims that the remaining U-shaped design of the boat is still encased in its protective plate, despite the murky waters and layers of silt covering it up. Its body is covered in thick bands of rust and is studded with tiny shells and underwater vegetation. According to Stanford University, around 23,000 Higgins boats were manufactured throughout the 1940s. They were transporting soldiers and war vehicles from ships to land for the United States and its allies. On June 6, 1944, around 1,500 Higgins boats carried American, British, and Canadian soldiers to the beaches in Normandy, France under heavy bombardment from German forces. Because the landing craft had sunk so deep, the Park Service started deploying divers to the site in 2006. There are scant clues about how the vessel ended up in Lake Mead, but no one knows if it sunk unintentionally or on purpose. On the other hand, the surplus nature of the craft shows the older age of the lake, 
when Las Vegas and Lake Mead were far more isolated and away from most of the United States, relatively cheap World War II excess could be used for new peaceful uses in the park. However, what more difficult findings will the drying up river bring? What action should the government take in response to the crimes? Let us know your thoughts in the comments section below.